Hello everyone, welcome back to Fulgurn Gaming's Let's Play of Kingdom Hearts. In the last episode, we actually read Atlantica's Waters of the Heartless, and I don't really know if Triton appreciates it as much as I would like him to, but anyway, we don't really have to worry about Atlantica anymore. The only reason I can really think of to come back here is actually for this White Trinity. Well, apparently Sora just doesn't want to stop, and that's one thing, like, this ability to swim really fast, I can never ever get him to stop when I want to. He just keeps on swimming really fast. I think you just have to tap circle again, but even if you if that is what you have to do, it never works for me. But what I was going to say was, the only reason we have to come back here that I can remember is actually just to go get a white trinity, which we don't have that ability yet, or I don't think we would ever, ever have to go back there. But we do need to go back to Traverse Town, but not before we go back to the Olympus Coliseum and take care of the Pegasus Cup, I believe. I know we did the first trial, but we have to do the Solo trial, I believe, and then we have to do the time limit one. The time limit one is very difficult, in my opinion, especially, you know, at the level we are with the weapons and stuff we have, but I believe that we can do it because, you know, what level are we right now? Like 30, 33? I wouldn't normally do this, but I think we can do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all of my weapons ready, all of my items ready. Oh, and abilities, that is another thing. I need to get my abilities straightened up, unless I did that already. No, I did not. Alright, so we need to take off Jackpot, we need to take off Treasure Magnet, I'm gonna go ahead and equip S Strike Raid, Blitz, and Sonic Blade. Obviously Jackpot and Treasure Magnet aren't going to do anything in the Coliseum because they don't drop items or anything. And Blitz is actually pretty powerful because at the end of your combo, that third attack will actually be a lot stronger. Obviously Sonic Blade is a must in this attack, you know, at the level we are, Sonic Blade is going to help a lot. So let me go ahead and get all my items and stuff ready, guys, and I'm probably going to speed up this, you know, the trials here, because this is, like I said before, the same exact fights that we've seen a hundred times already. So I'll see you guys when I'm done. Alright guys, it looks like we took care of the solo fight here in the Pegasus Cup and won yet another Mithril from it. No, I don't want to start over because really what that does, I don't know why they give you that option actually, but I guess if you wanted to do it over immediately you could do that. But now that we've done it with just Sora, I can actually go back in with Donald and Goofy, but not yet, I'm not quite ready. In this fight, you really, really, really want to have a whole lot of MP replenishing items if you are as low a level as I am. So I'm going to go ahead and get everything set up yet again, and there are a couple of tips along the way in the, you know, timed fight here that I want to let you guys in on, so I'll see you guys in a second. Alright guys, here we are in the Black Fungus fight. This is actually one of the harder ones, but if you want to take them out really quickly, all you got to do is cast a gravity spell pretty much immediately. But if they go into their, you know, metal form, which I hope they don't do right now, because if they do, you pretty much have to start over. So hopefully, yeah, there we go. So as long as you cast that gravity spell, whatever reason, that is a really strong attack to use on them, you'll pretty much be able to take them out with one more combo. So we have about two more minutes to take care of the rest of the fights. I'll see you guys after we are done. Here we are on the Leon and Yuffie fight. Here you pretty much want to go for Yuffie first, at least in my experience, and you definitely want to keep using your special abilities. Whatever you have equipped, whether that be Strike Raid, whether that be, you know, Sonic Blade, or, or Strike... Yeah, I get those names mixed up sometimes, but you guys know what I mean. Wow, did I really fail that right there? I didn't get the, the last rave or whatever they're called. But this is probably going to be your fastest way of dealing damage to these guys. Hopefully I don't... I guess, you know, this is why I say that you want to have a whole lot of magic items or whatever. And one hard thing about taking out Yuffie is actually that she will use those healing items. So if she does that, you are you might be screwed if she uses a healing item, especially if you only have a certain, you know, limited amount of time left. And if you have, you know, some ethers left over, don't feel afraid to keep using those sonic blades or whatever. Because it is pretty frustrating, believe me, when you get to the very last one and you don't, you know, you, to the last fight here and you don't win. That is pretty frustrating. So hopefully, let's see if I can take him out. When he takes that sword out, I mean, sometimes he'll dodge, or not dodge, but he'll be able to deflect your regular attacks. So that is yet another reason why you might want to use, you know, special attacks. And also, you know what, I don't think I've had to use a potion or a cure the entire time that I've been fighting. So I don't think your main worry is going to be, you know, HP. 
per se, it's probably going to be magic. That is really why I said that you want to use that stuff. But here we have defeated Leon and Yuffie in record time. 19 seconds left. Even as fast as I went through that, to me it seemed pretty fast. We were still really getting through there by the skin of our teeth there. And you know what? No, I don't want to start over. The skin of your teeth is one of those phrases that I... You know, not that I use all the time or anything. It's just a weird phrase. If you really think about it, the skin of your teeth... I don't know if they're referring literally to the skin of your teeth because at the last time I looked, my teeth don't have skin. But also, just that phrase itself is kind of disgusting when you really think about it, or at least it is to me. But now that we take, have taken care of the Pegasus Cup, the solo run, the timed run, and the original run with all three of them, we are finally able to leave the Olympus Coliseum. That fight right there, I actually had to, you know, stop a recording earlier because I ran out of ethers, I ran out of time, I stopped, you know, I died. Or I didn't actually die, that's the big thing. You hardly ever die in those, but when they're timed, you actually, you really need to hurry. So I'm actually going to go ahead and replenish all my items, get everything ready for the next area, and we will go back to the 100 acre wood and see what our friends are up to. And I just realized when I went in there that I wasted all my money on ether, so I really didn't have any money left over, you know, to buy extra items. And I didn't really need to, And if you think about it, because have we seen an enemy in the 100 acre wood yet? Uh, the answer to that is no, so we won't really be needing any, you know, items in the 100 acre wood per se. But I'm gonna go ahead and get us there very quickly. And here we are in the 100 acre wood. That torn page, I can't remember if we got it in, an, in Atlantica or not, but I think we did. It actually opened up this area right here, but I have a, another place to go really quick. We can actually go back to Pooh's house and get an item that wasn't previously available. I think you actually have to have fire uh, to get this. So luckily we have fire now, and if we light Pooh's fire, you know, it looks like he's almost like at a campfire that wasn't lit, so that's kind of, you know, pathetic. But if we talk to Pooh now, Thank you, Sora. This is nice and warm. And for that, we will be getting a... Mithril. It took a while for that item notification to come up, but the fact that he was just sitting there all alone next to a, you know, a, a fire that he couldn't light, I str it strikes me kind of as sad, almost, in a way. But now that we've done that, we can actually come over here to the clearing with tree stumps. And I'm not sure if there's going to be a cutscene here or not, but there is definitely going to be a minigame. Alright, looks like there isn't a cutscene, but if we come over here and talk to Tigger, this here is my bouncing spot. We can bounce around here all day. Nothing beats bouncing. We haven't seen... Oh, what is his name? Am I really gonna forget? Rue. His name is Rue, alright? You wanna bounce too, Sora? It's lots of fun. Lots of fun! Okay, let's go ahead and bounce. To bounce with the finest, you'll need some pointers from the finest. Makes sense. Oh no, Owl's gonna give us another tutorial again, isn't he? But Owl, you don't bounce around like we do. He's thinking about this a long time. I'm afraid you're right. I can't master everything, I suppose. Yes! No Owl tutorial. That is actually a relief. Bounce this way, please. And this tutorial stage area, what we're doing right now... Or actually, this isn't even a tutorial. This is like, there are kind of two mini games here. But one doesn't really count, and you'll see what I mean in just a second. But if we talk to Tigger, I think he'll get us started here. Alright, so apparently this is the minigame. I didn't think it was, though. This is kind of like Simon Says, almost. You have to bounce on these logs. I'm pretty sure you have to bounce in the exact path that he does. And you're not allowed to fall off, either. And one thing that I want to point out is you guys saw that I was able to use my high jump a second ago, right? Yeah, that tripped me up the first time I played because they don't let you use your high jump when you're doing the minigame. But right before you start the minigame, you're able to use it. So I was like, oh, this is an easy jump. Let me jump from all the way back here, you know, and I didn't have enough air to get to the next platforms. But let's go ahead and we made it. And that was just the first of, I believe, three. So let me go ahead and get these done real quick. And by the way, I just want to point out that this is just like that thing in what level was that in Banjo-Kazooie, the Bubble Loop Swamp area, where you have to jump on the turtles or whatever. I had a hard time with that minigame. I guess I'm just 
I haven't had my coffee today, so my memory is not up to par. So hopefully I get this right, and I don't think falling off is really our big worry here. I think jumping in the wrong direction, or jumping on the wrong platform in the first place, is going to be our big downfall. Oh my, that camera almost just screwed me over. That was almost really cheap right there, but it looks like we did it right. I can't believe that. And the final one here, I, I didn't even speed that up, did I? You're doing fantastical. This will be the last one. This last one is a little tiny bit confusing, or it was to me at least when I first played it. You actually have to jump on that little, you know, log over, over there that they have been using as a, like a seesaw or a teeter-totter, depending on what you call it. And then you have to jump off that and then follow the path normally. The thing is, I knew that you had to, it's not really hard to figure out what to do, I guess I misspoke earlier. You really just have to jump over here, Rue is going to jump us on top of this little tree here. It's kind of hard to judge, you know, where to fall right here. I guess I'm just gonna go- well, you know what, actually I could probably use my first person mode, couldn't I? Still, how is that gonna really help? Oh no! Wow, I made it, I can't believe that. And then from here, like I said, it is just like normal. And we should have this pretty much wrapped up here. And there we go, three out of three completely done. You've gotten mighty good at bouncing, Sora! Right, Rue? Man, his little two-step there was kind of funny. But now we're getting into the real minigame that actually counts for points. You've gotten- Are you kidding me? You just said that, Tigger. Maybe we have to talk to Rue, I don't exactly remember. Yeah, you do have to talk to Rue, I just- For whatever reason I did just remember, you actually do have to talk to Rue. Hey, Tigger, I think he's ready for the big one! Well, there's only one way to find out. And this is what we, what is called Tigger's Giant Pot. This thing will actually shoot nuts out at us, or maybe two poop. Tigger is actually throwing them, I'm not entirely sure. But you have to hit them back and not fall off like I just did. I wasn't thinking. You actually have to hit those nuts back at the, the pot there. And I believe there, I didn't look, you know, that closely, but I think there was a timer up there. And to complete this mini game, you actually have to get it in 30 seconds or less, I believe. So let's go ahead and try this again. Oh, you couldn't do it? Oh, thanks for making me feel so good, Rue. Try again, okay? Alright, so Tigger's Giant Pot. What I like to do is lock on, move back, jump, and hit. And you have to get, like, yeah, 20 points or whatever. Not really sure how this works as far as scoring goes, but it's not entirely even. Like, look at that, I just got 5 for that one, so I'm not sure what the scoring is, but it's not even. Like, I just- I think I just said that twice, didn't I? But- it's not really easy to judge, like, how many you need to hit, or how many, or where you need to hit them or whatever. So if you don't get 30 on the first try, it's not, or 20 on the first try, it's not that big of a deal. But it looks like I did pretty much do it on the first try there. And if I talk to Rue, maybe, I wonder if he'll give me anything, or if he's just gonna ask me if I wanna play again. Wow, Sora, you're so good at everything. That's more like it, Rue. I guess I never need to play that minigame again, but there is a whole lot of treasure in this area. And I don't know if I've ever collected everything, so I'll try my best, but if we talk to Tigger over here, he suggests that we go try out the seesaw, and you have to do that to get most of the treasure in this area. Here is one piece of treasure, we actually have to break open that log to get another mithril. And by the way, when I said last episode, I don't know if enemies drop mithrils or not, I think there's like one enemy that has 1% chance of dropping a mithril. So I take it back when I say that I don't appreciate these mithrils we're getting out of treasure chests. But now we have our, you know, the ability to play on the seesaw with Tigger and Roos. Let's go ahead and be Tigger's seesaw partner first. There are a couple of pieces of treasure that we can get here. The first is actually, I think you have to jump up here. This one was really confusing for me at first because I didn't really know where to jump. And also, the camera angles are really confusing. Luckily, you can actually jump on these leaves here. We have to step on that, what looks like a spider web or something to make this fall down. A Dispel G, which is definitely a gummy ship piece, as with every item that starts with a G. If we step- actually, you know, I don't want to do that part yet, because there are actually some enemies, or items I should say, called- I think they're called Rare Nuts or something like that we have to give to Owl. And I like to do those last, just because I think those are a little bit harder to get. And I think the treasure chests are a little bit easier to see. So let's go ahead and use Tigger yet again. There should be another way we can go, like this way. Now I have to like put my scout hat on to see if there are any, you know, treasure chests over here. I could have sworn that there was a treasure chest over here. Let me look around just a little bit. Alright guys, I'm not sure exactly where the treasure chest is that I was looking for. I wonder if we can make this jump though. It doesn't look like it. But luckily, if we stand on this log right here, for whatever reason that happens, like a water spout comes out of the ground, or a, 
I don't even know what you would call that really, like a geyser opens up in the middle of the 100 acre wood, and if you can get on top of it, which it seems like I am unable to do right now, it lets you jump over here, which lets you jump over here pretty easily. And I think there's yet another piece of treasure that we can get, you know, using that, that geyser there, but I'm not sure where it- I think there might be another rare nut up there. But I think that is pretty much all the treasure I can get from Tigger and the geyser for right now, except for, you know, the rare nuts or whatever. And how come they're not letting me play? Apparently we have to interrupt their game of Seesaw to actually get on ourselves. but if we get to, you know, play with Rue here, he's not as big, obviously, so he'll jump us right here, and there should be a... I think there's a treasure chest up here as well, unless I'm misremembering. This part right, like I said, guys, it's been a long, long time since I have played this part, and it looks like they conveniently hit it, like, right under us. Alright, I made it to that treasure chest. I didn't think that was going to work, but what is this going to be? A gummy ship? Yeah, I knew it was going to be a gummy ship piece. It seems like the 100 acre wood is full of gummy ship pieces and mithril, so I think that is pretty much all the treasure that we can get. If I miss something, just point it out in the comments or something like that, and I will come back. But now that we've gotten all the treasure, we can actually go back and get the rare nuts, which kind of by extension gives us more treasure, because Owl will actually give us... I think he gives us treasure for each one we collect. Here's a rare nut. I think you can only get one at a time as well. And I don't want to mess anything else up, so I'm going to only get one at a time. Let's go ahead and see what we get for this one. Ah, splendid. Here's something in return. A power-up, so that's actually pretty good. And it would have helped in that fight against Leon and Yuffie, that's for sure. And I think we should probably go ahead and use Rue here. I saw two up there that we could get. In total, I think there are five of these, and there's one that was really hard for me to know how to get when I was a kid, and I'll point that one out for sure, because I bet a lot of people probably had trouble with it. Here's our second one returned. Defensa. Man, he's actually handing out some pretty good items. I'm surprised, really. And here's our third rare nut. I didn't think I was going to collect that. That's why my voice, you know, went alto for a second. Ah, splendid. Here's something in return. Mithril, oh, mithril Shard. We had a good string of items there for a second, but he kind of went down, you know, in quality there for a second. And the fourth one, I believe, we can actually get by... I'm not sure if you can... Oh, yeah, I know what to do. This actually does raise up, but I got it confused with this one over here. You actually have to push this down to make that one over there go up. Not sure why this happens. This is the one that I can never get as a kid, because you have to do this. You cannot jump from the ground. Even though it looks like you can, you can't jump from the ground to get that one. Don't know why. But that made it a little bit, you know, harder to know how to get. AP up, pretty good. And the last one I believe we can get using this one over here, but I actually don't remember where it is, so let's go ahead and see. Alright, it looks like it was over here. I think this is actually going to be the last one. Let's go ahead and see. I know what the last item Owl gives us is an Orichicum or whatever, however you pronounce it. So if that's it, that's actually going to be all the rare nuts in this area. Yes! Alright, I remembered where they all were. That was surprising. Look at all these nuts! We couldn't have done it without you. Thank you, Owl. Man, everybody's been pretty nice to me lately around here. Maybe they're finally beginning to appreciate all we've done. And I think that is everything, guys, in here. But like I said, it is entirely possible. Like, really likely, actually. I, I feel like I missed, like, one thing that I just don't know what it is. But our turn torn page turned into a mithril. We are now able to leave the 100 Acre Wood and not feel bad about leaving anything behind. Unless, in fact, I did actually leave some behind. But we... Oh, why did I do that? I don't want to actually save. Oh, I'm getting confused here. You don't leave the area like that. I was actually getting confused because I am going to get on my gummy ship to go to the next world. And in the last episode, I kind of hinted at what the next world would be. And because this episode is so long, I was thinking maybe I should wait until the next episode to show you guys what the next world is. But I don't think that would be entirely fair. So I'm going to go ahead and do it now. And man, is that not the most peculiar looking world that we have seen yet? It's actually pretty... I don't even know what to call it. I'm not going to call it scary because it's not really scary looking. But have you ever seen a world shaped like a pumpkin before? I don't think so. 
but this is my easily probably well easily and probably don't really go together when you're talking about your favorite of something but i'm gonna say this is one of my favorite worlds in the entire game and just because look at this it is so much different from all the other worlds in the game in terms of atmosphere that i think it really deserves to be one of the best ones because the other ones are like you know wonderland deep jungle i was gonna say the last world but that doesn't really fit Basically, all of them are really Disney-oriented. Even I don't think this is Disney. This is what, Tim Burton? I'm not sure if that is a like a Disney subset or anything. But this is Halloween Town. This sure is a spooky place. I'll bet the people here are scary looking too. Don't worry, we look spooky too. If they scare us, we'll scare them right back. You think so? I know so. Unfortunately, we don't actually get any sort of scary powers or anything. That would be pretty cool. But I'm going to go ahead and thank you guys for watching this episode of Let's Play Kingdom Hearts. In the next episode, we are going to go into the guillot guillotine, guillotine, depending on how you say it. If you want to use the French accent, you may say it a different way than the English pronunciation. But I want to anyway, thank you for watching this episode. And in the next episode, we are going to be taking on Halloween Town.